Well, good afternoon and welcome to the uh, next webinar in our orientation series for fall of 2020. Uh, my name is Tim Borchers. I'm the Vice President for Academic Affairs here. Uh, I will share my contact information at the end of the webinar, but you can certainly email me at any time. It's just tborchers at peru.edu. Glad to have you here today uh, to watch this webinar. I hope I answer some questions you have about academics at Peru State College, some of our requirements, some of the classes that you're in, some of the reasons for that. I'll pass along a few study skills as we go and hopefully prepare you to be successful with your classes this fall. Uh, we do look forward to having you on campus, uh, the class of 2024. So Peru State College, uh, a couple years ago, we went through a long process of trying to develop a vision and a mission statement for the college. And it, it really was uh, fairly easy to do because everyone was uh, really uh, bought into a uh, vision where we will be renowned for transforming student lives through personal engaging educational experiences. And we really mean this. We mean that we get to know our students on a personal basis and we provide them with the educational experiences they will need to be successful. You see a picture there of our 2019 Research and Creativity Expo. Uh, we weren't able to hold the one for last year, but this was an event that brought students together with faculty and other students to share the research that they've done. And we've had students do some really interesting research with faculty uh, really all around the world, and, and it was really fun to, to see them share that. And I think a great example of how we provide that personal personalized and engaging educational experience that really does transform the lives of our students. So I'll try to provide some more examples of that as we go today, and I'm sure you'll see plenty of examples during your time at Peru State College in the years to come. So what I wanna do is talk a little bit about the next couple of weeks to prepare you for the start of the semester, uh, talk a little bit about what will happen when you'll get here from an academic perspective, and then a few goals that you should have by your final year. And certainly our goal is for you to graduate from the college, uh, but we also know that students have other goals too, and we're, we're here to be, help you be successful in meeting those goals. So the Peru State academic structure, if you've already gone through orientation and registered for classes, you probably got to visit with faculty or deans or staff members in the different schools. Uh, we have the School of Arts and Sciences, which includes art, English, math, music, natural science, social science history, and many of our secondary education programs. And Dean Paul Henricks is your contact for that. We have the School of Education, which includes our education programs, as well as our physical education programs in kinesiology. And uh, Dean Dwayne Chisholm is one you would contact about that. And then I'm acting dean right now for the School of Professional Studies, which includes business administration, criminal justice, and psychology. And if you're undeclared, your advisor is either Jamie Everly or Janelle Moore, and you probably met with them when you came to uh, an orientation session. So we really are the, the contacts for you. If you have questions about academics, uh, you can contact me as the vice president, but you can also go to the deans or to your faculty advisor as well. Graduation requirements, uh, if you signed up for classes, maybe it was a quick session and, and didn't fully review everything uh, that, that you'll have to do. So I just wanna take a minute and do that now. The number of credits you need to graduate is 120. Uh, most of our classes are three credits, which means you'll take about 40 classes to meet the graduation requirements here. Uh, you'll see that those are broken really into three different, uh, three different buckets, if you will, or the pie chart, three different slices of the pie. Uh, our general studies program is 40 credits, and these are courses that students have a selection from, uh, but they'll include writing, math, uh, maybe an art course or a literature course, a science course, a social science course, and then a, a course in community, regional, and global studies. Majors vary. Uh, a lot of our majors are about 57 credits, so you'll have some courses to take there. And then sometimes the major courses overlap with the general studies courses, so you'll have even more electives than 23, but most students will have a, about 23 credits of electives uh, that they can take anything that they want with. So that can be band, choir, it can be a sport, it can be classes outside of your major, maybe a class that you want to explore. So those are all options to do with the electives. So you have to do more than just the general studies and the major requirements. You have to reach 120 credits as well. Sometimes students forget about that. So be sure you keep that, keep that number in mind. That's the, that's the end that you would need, the minimum. Some students take more than that. And, and some majors are, are bigger than 57 credits, especially in education. So you'll have fewer electives, but most majors do have some electives for students to take. 
The general studies program is really designed to give you a breadth of, of skills and knowledge so that you can be successful no matter what you go into. Uh, your major is where you will get in-depth classes on your different fields of study, but general studies is really to make sure that you're that well-rounded uh, student who can do a lot of different things, who can think creatively, who can think critically, who can communicate well, and so that's why we have this program. It's about 13 classes or 40 credits are required. There are five classes you'll take in English, math, speech, or organizational communication. There's a class you'll take that's focused on technology. And then you have to have two classes in what we call perspectives on values, thought, and aesthetics. And those are classes in English, art, music, speech or theater, or philosophy. You have to have two classes from two different areas. And then you'll have one class in biology, one in chemistry or earth science, and two classes in social science. And those will be the methods of inquiry and explanatory schema. And then, like I said, you'd have one class in community, regional, and global studies. And that's a course that's really designed to get you to look at diversity, to look at communities, to look at international issues. Each course is a little bit different, but they all focus on those major topics. So once again, you'll have 40 credits of general studies, you'll have credits for your major, and then you'll have some elective credits as well. For electives, to talk a little bit more about that, uh, for most majors, like I say, you'll have some, some freedom to take some elective courses. We have what we call minors, and these are areas in a discipline that requires fewer credits than a major. So sometimes it's good to take a minor to go along with a major. So if you're an art student, for instance, art would be your major. Maybe you'd wanna consider a minor in business so that you could learn some skills in in selling your art or setting up a studio or something like that. So that's an example of how a, a minor can really complement a major and give you some additional skills and some additional knowledge that will help you be successful. You also wanna look for classes with your electives to help communicate to prospective employers or graduate schools some of the areas that you're interested in. Because sometimes the classes outside of your major really speak to the kind of person that you are and, and what your interests are and what your passions are, and that's often what employers are looking for. So we really encourage you to take a look at some courses outside of your uh, major area. If you look at your schedule, if you uh, have registered, you probably have at least 14 credits and you might have some major classes, you might have some general studies classes. If you still have 14 credits, I would encourage you to think about maybe adding a credit to get to 15. Uh, 15 is a good number because it is, if you take 120 divided by eight semesters, you see 15 credits is what you need each semester to stay on track for a four-year graduation. It also allows you to withdraw from a course during the semester and still stay full-time. So if you move from 15 credits to 12 credits, you're still full-time, so that's a good thing. Uh, but sometimes you might find that course is just not working out for you and, and you choose to withdraw from it during the semester. You have up until uh, quite a ways into the semester, usually about the, the 12th week to withdraw from a course. You can take a one credit course by your sport. If you're a student athlete, you can sign up for HPER 190 and then choose the select sport that you're in. You can do band or choir for a credit. And we also have a study skills course that is a one credit course as well. And that's a new course that we're offering to really help students develop some study skills, some time management skills, maybe how to read effectively so that they do well in their classes. So you can look for those courses. Um, but those are really good courses to add. Uh, I always like to say to parents, particularly 200 level courses are just fine for first year students. Sometimes the, the numbering scheme in a department uh, just separates out maybe world history from US history, but really uh, they're both appropriate for first year students. If your ACT score is below 17, uh, you should be enrolled in either Math 100 or English 100. If you didn't get that class this fall, you'll take it in the spring. Uh, but those classes are really designed to give you some extra experience and some extra training uh, before you move into some higher level math and English courses. If you have scheduled your classes and you wish to make any changes, uh, be sure you talk with your dean or the person that you met with at orientation just to make sure that you're not going to change something that will cause some problems down the line. Some majors you really do need to have uh, courses in sequence your freshman year so that you stay, stay on track. So just be sure that you ask someone before you withdraw from a course or drop a course and add another course uh, as, you, as you think about your schedule this summer. College 101 is a course that you all should have on your schedule. 
And this is a course that we require of all first year students. It's a two credit course and you will take that course, unless you're an honor student, you'll take that course with students in your discipline taught by a faculty member in your discipline. And this is a course that really is designed to uh, prepare you for college, to help you with that transition and to help you start making some connections on campus. So you can see the topics there that we cover in the course. Uh, we cover why you're even in college. It's, it's a good discussion to have to help set goals, to help think about outcomes. And then some discussion about adjusting and balancing to, to college because it is a little bit different than high school. Uh, point you to some campus resources that you might find helpful. Uh, make some connections with student organizations, talk some about time and stress management, uh, a little bit on learning styles, taking notes and study skills. Uh, critical thinking is an important component of the course. You'll have to do some writing and presenting just to get some experience with that. There is a discussion of plagiarism, uh, which is an important discussion to have so that you uh, understand our academic integrity policies and know how to follow them. And then uh, a really big important part of it is, is really plotting out your next four years. So you'll sit down with your advisor and you'll create a four-year schedule in that course that you can uh, stick with and, and modify as you go if needed, but that really will help you see the, the big picture and, and how you will graduate in four years. And then there's discussion about financial literacy. So we have a lot of topics in that course, but it's a really great course to help you make that transition from, from high school to college in a really good way to get to know some students in your major as, as well as all the faculty. One thing you should do this summer is to order your books, and I would do that as soon as possible so that you can have them here on campus when you, when you arrive. Uh, you can have them shipped either to your home and bring them with you, or you can have them shipped to campus. But I would do that uh, very quickly if you have not done so. If you have excess financial aid, uh, you, you should have a code uh, at this point in your, you should have received an email on that. So check your Peru State email, uh, check your My PSC because you should have some information on that. If you don't have excess financial aid, then you wouldn't have received that voucher. Uh, but in any case, I would really encourage you to get your books ordered. Don't wait until the semester starts to see if your faculty will use them. Um, if, they're, if they're required books, then, then that's a book that, that would be required for your success. You can go to the website listed there, peru.ecampus.com. Uh, you click check, shop textbooks by course. You choose fall 2020, and then you choose the different courses that you have and books. And they provide a lot of different options in terms of rentals or electronic books or hardcover books, um, new use. So there's lots of different ways that you can uh, order your books. But please take care of that in the next week or two so that you have those books ready to go by the first day of classes. Then when you, when you come back to the college this uh, very quickly, you will, uh, what we call welcome week, I'll talk a little bit about making connections and making some adjustments. So welcome week is a really good chance to get to know the campus, to get to know other people at the college. Of course, it will look a little bit different this year with social distancing, but we still have a, a lineup of activities to help you get acclimated to the college and to help you uh, start to, to learn to, to meet new people and to find the resources that you need to be successful. So look forward to that. It's always a, it's always a fun act, event for us. Also, it's a good opportunity to make some connections during the first couple of weeks, uh, meet some people you wouldn't normally meet. Uh, I always tell students the best thing you can do to get off to a good start with your faculty member is to go find them in their office uh, that first week and introduce yourself, even if it's at a distance and just giving a, a wave to them. They would certainly appreciate getting to know you. Uh, find your advisor as well. Uh, you'll be able to find your advisor in my PSC. If you log in there, you can find the name of your advisor, uh, look them up in the directory, and then uh, go, go chat with them. You might even have them for a course. So it'd be good to go up to them right after that course and say, hey, I'm, I'm one of your new advisees. They really will appreciate that. Student organizations and clubs will be putting out uh, announcements about meetings. Almost every department or program has a student organization, so I would really encourage you to join the one for your, for your department. There's lots of other ones on campus, too, that you can take advantage of, and so I would strongly recommend that. I do want to say a, a few words about being homesickness. Uh, we, we do a survey of our students each semester uh, right at the beginning of the semester, and homesickness comes up as one of the top concerns that that students tell us about. Usually it goes away over the course of the semester and we've done some, some research on that to know that that does take place. Uh, students reach out to your resident assistant or a counseling staff member if you wanna, if 
you want to talk with them if you're feeling homesick. Parents, don't be surprised if students will call you uh, and telling you that they're that they're homesick. That's a, a very common occurrence. Uh, encourage them to reach out and get some support here on campus. If students and, and parents, if you do find that it is a, a real concern uh, for your student, then that's then that's something we should take take uh, seriously. Have them talk to one of our counseling staff members, uh, Janelle Moore or Jamie Everly, for some. Uh, just some tips for, for how to help with that and then we can connect them with some other resources. So don't be surprised if, if, if you feel homesick. Uh, it, it is something that, that happens to a lot of our students, but something that usually students are able to, to work through once they get to know some people on campus and start to settle in and feel more comfortable. I want to talk a little bit about making some adjustments. As I've said, uh, college is different than high school and uh, Students sometimes run into problems, and, and if they don't take college seriously, it can, it can kind of catch up with them during that first semester. So one of the first things to talk about is time management. And if you were in person, I would say, how many of you does this look like your high school daily schedule? And when I ask students that, almost every hand goes up. So usually in high school, you're pretty well scheduled from eight to five, at least when we were doing high school normally and not virtually. Uh, you would have classes, you might have some extracurriculars, and then in the evenings, maybe you had uh, a job, uh, maybe you had to uh, study for your classes. But in college, if you've already looked at your schedule, you see that it probably looks more like this, where you only have class uh, a few days a week, a uh, few hours a day, and nothing on Friday. And what I would really encourage you to do is take that schedule and put in some study time. Put in times to join a student organization. We don't do classes on Tuesday or Thursday at 11, so students can join student organizations that meet then. So that's a great opportunity. If you're a student athlete, maybe you have practice at 3.30 every, every day, but do schedule in your study time. Don't just go back to your, to your room and take a nap or play video games or chat with your friends. Do spend some time studying uh, because it's much more effective to study as you go as opposed to try to uh, cram everything in at the last minute and, and study for that test. So, so I really encourage you to think about time management. Parents have some discussions with your students about time management because that is uh, a little bit of a shock for some students when they, when they come to college. We also expect that you'll study two hours for every hour you're in the classroom. So if you're taking 15 credits, that's 30 hours that you'll be studying outside of class. Again, plan your study time. Uh, don't wait for the test to study. What I suggest students to do is review your notes after each class while it's all still fresh. Write down any questions that you might have or email your faculty about that. Attendance is such an important factor in how well you're going to do in a course. So it's very important to go, to go to class. Of course, we don't want you coming to class if you're sick. Uh, notify your instructor if you're not able to attend class and then make up the work for it. But but if you're feeling well, otherwise come to class because that is very important. Also use your free time to get involved on campus. There are so many different ways that you can uh, become engaged with, with the campus and with the activities and those will really help you out. So take advantage of all those opportunities. You'll get a syllabus on the first day of class and this really is your roadmap for the class. Uh, it will tell you the schedule, how much each assignment is worth, the books that are needed, the contact information for your faculty. So really take that, take that seriously. It will contain a lot of great information. It'll contain some class policies because some policies are a little bit different from professor to professor, even with regards to attendance. So make sure that you know about those different policies. Make sure you know how to get in touch with your faculty member if you need to notify them if something comes up. You'll be assigned an advisor. Like I said, you can find that in my PSC. You can look up who that person is. Usually it's a faculty member in your discipline. And you'll meet with that person at least twice a year. Uh, they have to release your advising hold before you can register for the next term. But they're also going to be a great contact for you if you run into problems or have some have something you know that you need to talk through with, with someone from an academic perspective. Also, you want to talk with them before dropping a course or withdrawing from a course so that they can talk about what that means for you. And as I mentioned, College 101, that class will help you create a four-year plan uh, with your advisor for the courses that you'll have to take. I do want to say a word or two about academic probation and suspension. Uh, you have to have a 2.0 GPA to graduate, so it's really important to stay on track. 
So we have some different policies that we have in place for students that slip below that 2.0 in a semester or if their cumulative GPA slips below a 2.0. So if you're on probation, uh, that means you get to meet with a Bobcat success coach who will provide some tips and some strategies for you and, and help you be accountable and, and keep you on track. If you're suspended, that means that you have to sit out a semester before returning to the college. And you can get suspended after the first semester if your GPA is less than a 1.0. And so that just gives you time to kind of reflect. Uh, there is an appeal process, uh, but it is a, is a good time for you just to kind of take a pause and, and think about uh, what you'll need to do to be successful when coming back. When I hear from students who are suspended, they often share with me uh, phrases such as you're seeing there. I didn't realize how much of an adjustment college would be, they tell me or I only enrolled in 12 credits and had too much time on my hand, or I was afraid to ask for help, comes up quite often, and, and we're all here to help you, and it, it uh, makes me sad when, when we hear students don't come for help, so we're looking to see what we can do to make sure we're as open and inclusive for students so they do feel like they can come for help, but that often comes up, or as I stressed with studying, a lot of students tell us that they know they should have taken more time studying, so Learn from these students and try to and try to overcome the challenges that they faced uh, so that you're successful here. By your final year, you should have done some research with faculty. There are a lot of faculty that do some really interesting research with students, and so I would encourage you to ask about that. Or perhaps you're more career focused and an internship is something that you're interested in. You can certainly uh, do an internship and um, work for money sometimes and get academic credit. And it's a good opportunity for you to reflect on, on what you've learned and how you can, how you can put that to, to practice uh, going forward. A study abroad is a great opportunity. You see a picture there of a, of a trip that, that went to uh, Norway and, and Sweden, uh, Norway and Finland, excuse me, last, uh, about a year and a half ago it was now that that trip went. And so hopefully we'll be back to, to doing study abroad again soon. So. Uh, ask about that, particularly that's a good thing to do maybe after your junior year. And then if you're an education major, you will have done some student teaching. And then finally, we get to talk about graduation. So your calendars should be marked for May 4th, 2024. Uh, that will be the day that we hold graduation uh, for, your, for your class. I look forward to having you there. I'm the one in the, in the green uh, robe and President Hansen will present your diploma to you and shake your hand. But I also want to say something about Gutbuster. And uh, Gutbuster, if, if you know Peru, Gutbuster is a very steep hill that's just off campus. If you uh, haven't seen Gutbuster, I encourage you during the first, first few days you're, you're here, ask someone where Gutbuster is and they'll show you. It's just off campus, but it's a super steep hill. Uh, one of the fun events that we do every year on campus is called the Nebraska's Toughest Mile. And it's a, a running race that starts downtown Peru and ends up by the library. And so there are three really big hills that, that people have to go up uh, when, they're, when they're doing the race. And the toughest one is Gutbuster. And no matter uh, who you are, almost everyone has to walk at some point as they're going up Gutbuster. Uh, and, and that's always been my experience too. Even the years I'm in good shape, I always have to, to walk at some point. But some people just walk the whole way. Uh, some people bring their dogs, their strollers. It's just a, a super fun event, a good way to get out and get some exercise. And I really think that, that gut buster is a little bit like, like your road to academic success. Uh, like I say, it's, it's challenging. Uh, people have to stop and walk. Maybe even some people sit down you know, and rest for a little bit or take a drink of water as they're going. So not everybody goes at the same speed. Everybody has a little bit different road that they, that they travel on their road to academic success. It will be challenging at times. It won't look like other people. But you know, the really important thing, if you've, if you've done any reading on the growth mindset, you know that as we experience new situations and as we experience new challenges, we grow and we learn. And the same thing is true of, of your muscles as you prepare to run a race, but the same thing is true of your, of your mind, of your, your psyche. You can grow and develop and become a person you never imagined that you could be uh, by taking on some challenges, by accepting some defeats and by bouncing back from them. And I really think that's what's, that's what's important as you go through college. It's, it's not just uh, running up that road as fast as you can, 
but it's learning about yourself, learning about others, finding what you're passionate about, and really preparing yourself so that when you leave here, uh, you can go and be successful wherever that might be. Ultimately, you'll define what success means to you, and we're gonna be here cheering you on, uh, helping you out, pushing you, providing feedback, uh, but really helping you be the successful college graduate that you that you want to be. So with that, I am uh, open if anyone wants to pose any questions in the in the live webinar. If you have other questions, you can either call me or email me or follow me on Twitter. Uh, but I'm the Vice President for Academic Affairs, and I really enjoy getting to know students. I'll be at a lot of the Welcome Week events, and I've got uh, open office hours. If, if, if students want to come up and find me on the third floor of the administration building, I'm very happy to talk with them, help them out if they're having some issues. But, but I always like to hear about student stories and student experiences as well. So I'll just wait another minute or two to see if there are questions. I should also say that, that everything that I've talked about you will be able to find in your new Bobcat book when that comes, or there's a handout available in this webinar, uh, the orientation handout that you may have seen at the orientation uh, website, and if not, you can, you can download it from this webinar as well. So with that, I would thank you for your, for your attendance today and wish you all the best and look forward to having you on campus soon.